Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the regularly scheduled select board meeting for Monday, October 2nd, 2023. I'm Brad Town. With us also are, to my left, Flo Smith and Joe Stahl. To my right, Tor Nelson, our town select board member and administrator. Um, additions or changes to the agenda tour? Uh, no. Um, public comment? So, yes. I, I have some concerns um, with road conditions, um, both paved roads and dirt roads um, from acquaintances as, as well as, you know, so um, an acquaintance hit the, the pothole on, on the backside, of, well, on Scott Hill, um, did, did pretty good damage to her tire. So, uh, actually, Mr. Chair, we're supposed to be in the public hearing at this point. Public hearing. For water system. Oh, it's my mistake. <laughs> we'll get back to it. <laughs> All right, public hearing for the water system ordinance revisions. Uh, Dom? So there's uh, a document uh, in your packet um, looking to make. There's two parts to it, but one substance will change to the water system ordinance. Uh, first is to add a definition under the definition section for fire protection capacity, and that reads the ability of a public water system in mitigating the unwanted effects, effects of potentially destructive fires. And then in the ordinance itself, uh, adding a section, section 20, uh, adding a section of fire protection, uh, basically says all new houses commercial, industrial, or other buildings used for human occupancy, business, or employment, etc., uh, or any major site plan or change of use or any permits uh, requested um, if they're within 200 feet of our public water system, they're expected to connect to the water system. If it's some type of a structure that will not be used for human occupancy, um, or, um, then and they're within a thousand feet of the water system, they are expected to procure uh, capability through the allocation of ERUs. Am I about saying that right, Tom? It is correct. And the select board uh, reviewed this about a month ago now and uh, opted to uh, give consideration under this public hearing. And the Public Works Board has also uh, approved this as far as requesting to be brought before the select board. Mm -hmm. Okay, any comment on this? Yes. Will the people who are building be responsible for paying for that hookup? From the main to their house? Yeah, from yeah. their house to the main. Yeah. Okay. And could you please state your name for the record? My reading? name is Jane Fallon. Thank you, Jane. Any other comments? Can I? Um, I didn't know if this was going to be addressed at all, Articles 2 to 3, to repair and update the water and sewer today. Article 2 that's going to be voted on on November 7th. Uh, We do it have it. It wasn't under this ordinance, but it could be maybe part of your public comment. Or uh, we do have a bond vote warning amendment uh, scheduled later on that would relate back to those two articles. Okay. Now, is, um, is the meeting for that going to be November 6th, the day before voting? Is that correct. the yep. correct time to come? And that's going to be at the school, correct time? Correct. So basically, that's the time to come and talk about this. Well, we can't tonight. Uh, like I said, when we get to that point in the agenda, we're more than, ha more than uh, happy to hear your, okay. your thoughts. So yeah, right. if you don't mind sticking around. OK. okay. Any other comments on this? Any questions? 
I think you made a comment something to do with the ER, ERUs. Equivalent residential units. Thank you. Roughly equal to 250 gallons per day of potable water. Anything else? Okay. Um, hearing nothing more, we'll close the public hearing for the water system ordinance revisions. And let's see here. Now we're back to public comment. Now we're sorry about that. No <laughs> public <problem>. comment. <laughs> no okay. Problem. You're up. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So this is just to you know bring it to the board's attention. Um, you know, the large, large pothole and acquaintance of mine hit um, that sh shows damage, you know, to a tire. Um, there has been posts on Front Porch Forum about, like, I've seen specifically Muzzy Road. Um, haven't seen anything other than that. Um, and from from my my perspective is the the closure or the, the continued closure at this point of Payne Turnpike North regarding you know fire department emergency response. Um, we have responders that um, potentially you know, come that, that do live on that side of the closure um, that, you know, in a volunteer department, as, as you all know, um, time, time is of the essence. Um, and, you know, so in addition to the people that just live on that side, for our responders, you know, it could also apply to any of us that, you know, attempt to or would normally be able to utilize that way to get to the station, um, number one. But number two, in, in the case of, you know, an emergency call, um, which we have, have had several, um, you know, you're because of that closure, you're now forcing emergency vehicles into much heavier trafficked roads, um, which are being forced that that way because of that closure. Um, so you're just you're it's it's adding another level of risk and you know timely response. To, to get to an emergency on that side. So, you know, I, I guess I'm just hoping that, you know, it can be revisited um, or discussed further that, you know, there's, there's at least a temporary fix to that and, and not, you know, an 18 month delay or whatever, like what happened on Fisher Road. That's all. Okay, thank you. Any other public comment? Hearing none. Um, okay, um, do I speak now or later? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead now? Okay. Yeah, no, don't, don't sit around for too long. Okay. Um, yeah, I uh, saw this thing on Articles 1 through 5 that's going to be voted on. Um, my question is, it says Articles 2 and 3, Repair and Update Water and Sewer. Uh, do we have anything that is failing inspection? The problem with the sewer is over by um, the hospital. A bank has slid and has bellied the line. It hasn't ruptured yet, but it has, it, it's no longer a straight gradual uh, flow. It's got a sag in it because the, the dirt's pushed it down and that's where the problems lie on the sewer. The water, uh, I'm not sure, uh, the water I believe was to extend the line 
correct making a complete loop, loop in the in the system. Yeah. So that if if a uh, rupture occurs in the water, you can shut off on either side, and still everyone else will have water just that short distance. Well. Okay. Now, is that on the property of the the hospital? Do they own the property? On uh, the sewer line. Yeah. Tom. I think it's in the state right of way. Right. Yeah. And one of the problems there was, as you go down the access where the hospital parking lot is, that bank, the water has washed out underneath it. And now the bank is sliding. So you have to get water. Uh, did they take and say that was a stream? Correct. Yeah. So now you have water resources has to approve any work or uh, rivers and streams have to approve any work. Mm -hmm. And the ideal solution would be just put some stone in it, build it back up, fix the line, and hopefully it would hold. But now if it's on the state right of way, is that something that the state should be taking care of rather than the town? No, that's still it's still town property. It's, it's our line. It's a, it's a town sewer line. However, the state should be taking care of the bank, I think. All right. <clears throat> and if that fails, that line right there carries all of the sewage from up here. So you'd have a catastrophic failure uh, rolling down the hill towards 302. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's the, be, just be noted that the, the, um, how that's paid for is by the users of the of the sewer system, it's not the general population of the town. Yeah. So the bond that would be because it says where the proposed plan involves issuing bonds to improve our water system. Now that wouldn't be the sewer. No, no, no that's the finishing loop. The 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 connect the two ends of the pipes together so that if in that loop if something fails. Everyone, all the other users will have water still. Whereas if it, right now, if it fails, you, le you lose a, um, everything downstream from where the failure is. Those people go without water. And, and the loop is, the loop is by the hospital as well? No, it comes down um, uh, Scott Hill Road. Road. Do you know where our, our wells and the tanks are? Yeah, where exactly are they? Um, they're up off of uh, Scott Hill Road, just off of Airport Road, what's called the Dodge Farm, okay. if you're familiar with that area. Uh, so the way the system is now, the main comes down Airport Road, uh, you know, past the airport, uh, Prescott, uh, a couple of churches out that way, down and around, uh, you know, towards uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, and the um, Berlin Health and Rehab, you know, covers up uh, Granger and Industrial Lane in that area, and then you know shoots across uh, uh, Route 62 towards uh, the mall and and Coles and all that area. With this loop, then when it comes out on Scott Hill Road, instead of going to Airport Road, we'll now extend in the other direction and tie it back around. So, like right now, if a leak occurs on Airport Road would have to shut off water to the whole system, to everybody, even though you know, you're know you down by you know, Northwood Savings Bank here off of Payne Turnpike, even though you're you know, way far away from the break itself, since you know, the, basically just one direction of the water, one you know, poorly located break would take out the whole system. With this loop going down Scott Hill Road, would have some redundancy built in, we could cut off that section of the of the main that broke, but still be able to uh, you know power the rest of the system. Now, pretty much the people who are on sewer that that would be mostly businesses. This is water we're talking about. Now. I mean water. Excuse me. I meant water. The vast, yep. the vast majority are commercial customers. Per. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure after you leave, you'll probably think of a couple more, but um, like I said, we'll be back on November 6th. Uh, feel free to stop in and or, or give us a call anytime in between. Okay. And voting for the bond means we're responsible for it, even if the state and for, we don't get a penny from them. 
you vote the bond, in other words, if they don't pay anything towards it, we, we cover the whole cost, right? The, 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 bond. the bond gives us the authority to obtain the bonds. Um, it's not a requirement that we actually go through with the bonds. It's just giving us the authority. Um, if it looks like, you know, for whatever reason, you know, maybe construction costs go up a lot higher between now and then or some, some of the reason that we feel this isn't a viable product, we're not committed to taking out that loan, you know, issuing those bonds. Okay. But again, on those two particular ones, it's the users of the water system and the sewer system who will pay the debt service on any loan that would be taken out. It's not the general It's pop. not, okay, so that wouldn't affect us. It's not the general populace of the town. Okay, all righty. Okay, thank you. Well, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anything else on the water system ordinance revisions? Is there a vote on that? Tom? Yes. Okay, entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Any further discussion on the water system ordinance revisions? Hearing none, uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Uh, July flood roads update. Darling Hill. So I've included in your packet the hydrology, hydrology survey from um, Darling Road. You may remember at our last meeting, uh, we'd authorized the purchase of a uh, culvert in about the $20,000 uh, range. The AOT hydraulics survey came back um, and basically so that would not be uh, sufficient. Uh, they're actually recommending a concrete box uh, culvert uh, with a span of uh, 14 feet and a height of 7 feet. I'll let Tim jump in. For yeah, so they, they want a concrete box that's 14 foot wide by 7 foot high, I guess, for a stream that's 2 foot wide and 3 inches deep right now. If that goes downstream to theirs at 11 by 4. So, and I don't know if there's any room for rebuttal in that hydraulic study, but it sounds a little much to me. Well, the um, I'm not a hydrologist. The way this works with FEMA is you have to go we don't FEMA. submit each and every road individually to FEMA. We we group them together uh, in groups of groups of ten. Uh, what it would mean for this project is we would pull Darling Road out of the group that it's in. We can proceed with uh, an efficient paperwork on those roads, submit it, hope to get paid. Um, but we would do this as a separate project, just like Richardson Road is a totally separate project, a standalone on its own. Um, we had a site visit with FEMA, was it last week, Tim, or the week before? Uh, they had four or five people out looking at Richardson Road, we would do the same thing, and they might have some other ideas uh, as far as you know, what we needed to fix it if we need to go this full, you know, this full on uh, culvert if we could do something in between. So I, I guess my recommendation is we go ahead with that site visit from FEMA and see what they say. And but uh, you know, it's no action to take tonight. It's just that yeah. we won't be purchasing that culvert that we had authorized, and the timeline for for uh, Darling. Final repairs is going to be much longer than we initially expected. I mean, it's open now. It's, yeah, it's, it's got temporary repairs made uh, to get us to the winter, <coughs> but um, it's not going to be finished for for a long time. Okay. Uh, 
is there anything I else you want? I'm sorry. So I, I do believe <laughs> FEMA will pay for the temporary fixes as well as Correct. the permanent fixes. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, did you want to mention anything else about the junction road? Junction going to be the same. I'm rolling back as far as that one by the trailer. Yeah, one that they, collapsed. They did a hydraulic study on that one. Um, when I talked to Jaron a week ago, it was in process, pending 30 days, and then a review board. So it'll probably be close to November by the time we hear anything out of that one. But this one had been done for a while, but they never sent it to us. I don't know why that got caught up somewhere. So that, that one on Junction Road, is that north of Bartlett? Mm -hmm. And before the bridge? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else on the updates? Plugging away. Traveling and grading the sweet 11, 11, 12 hours a day. We all. Okay. 36 loads of gravel today and barely made a dent anywhere. So, well, like you said, I'm, we're on Darling Road right now. That'll get finished up tomorrow. And then a few loads of gravel on Neal Road to fix that up. And then working our way down Route 12 will be Chase Road by the end of the week, maybe. Muzzy by next week. Yeah. So. Doing what we can, the four of us. Thank you. Um, Are you short on trucks? Uh, I got there's four of us, and I got three trucks. So. Right. Could you use four or five trucks? I mean, uh, is that is that the thing? I mean, would yeah. that help wow. the process? Are you sitting and waiting for trucks to return? No, because we're doing other stuff. Well, I'm doing other stuff in between. I'm chasing other spots and polishing them up, but yeah, you know what I mean, we can definitely, I mean, I got a few phone calls out, just looking for people. Mm -hmm. um, any else on the roads update? If not, uh, Town Highway Garage and Energy Improvements. The so during the site that we saw it wants to move the two heating units and change out that wall, take out that wall yet. Mm -hmm. Did you get a chance to go out and look at cold storage? I did not, no. Okay. So when I went out there there's almost like two sections of cold storage, right? The other half is the police department. Uh, that's what I thought bunch of the police department stuff, which is probably outdated, unusable. I, I think you're... Get rid of it. Tasers? What's that? No. Tasers? No. Oh. <laughs> All blue lights. There, there's, That's better. There's like old equipment out there. What do you mean we can't get rid of? I, I stuff my department, so... Okay. So we ought to be asking about that. Because in the process of, of doing this reconstructed, the remodeling or whatnot, um, I think in the, the cold storage currently is tires. But we also have a large amount of flammable, about petroleum products, hydraulic oil, whatever, whatever. You know, we could get, a, get that out of there as well and have some sort of control of, of that material. Is that oil new or, you, or used? No, it's all new. Uh, there's one drum of used oil in there that hasn't been picked up yet. But that's taking up a lot of, right now, floor space, and it's not really a controlled environment for that material. I think it would be a good place to put it, it would be out there in cold storage. Depending on what time of the year one wants to be, you know, pumping off hydraulic fluid, but they'll thin, the, it'll that thin was up. the whole, you know, point of the command door was is just so we could go in and out and get our oil supplies and whatnot yeah. out of there. And 
but oh. we should be asking about that police equipment. It kind of reminds me of what Riverton used to look like. We stored a lot of old police equipment. Yeah, there's stacks of metal targets in there, light bars and radios, and they throw their summers and winter tires in there. Okay. There might have been a few sets of tires in yep. there. They usually, keep, they usually keep some tires in there, uh, some desks. Yeah. Yeah, because what the original plan or was is like, if we ever get rid of that tire pile behind the salt shed was is, um, one of the shipping containers around here, we were going to move behind the salt shed and that's where we were going to put most of the tires that are in that cold storage. Because there's, like there's a spare grader tire in there, a spare loader tire. Um, there's some tires in there that we don't even use anymore that have just kind of hung on for the year e over the years um, and then like all our road closure signs the bigger wooden ones on the easels are stored in there so basically what we need to do is go through doing inventory and figure out what to get rid of oh. are you just sticking around for the capital family brain cool Thank you for everything, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you also, Tim, for having us over and giving a good explanation of what your thoughts are and overview. It's helpful. Yeah, just with that wall, it breaks it up a little bit and it's kind of it. We lose a lot of space there that we could use. Give us a little more room to work and walk around in the wintertime and whatnot. So. So out near the loader, there was a, a large tote. Is that just water for the pressure washer? No. What, what is that? DEF. Okay. Thank you, Dan. We get, we get it all, so it's cheaper. We get that. Usually, about where it's at right now, we get down to about a half a half a tote, and we'll order some. We'll call them up. They deliver it with a. It looks like an oil truck, 10-wheeler. Mm -hmm. And your diesel fuel, where do you get that? Huh? Your, your, the fuel for your equipment. Where do we get it? Do we have a storage container out there? Do we pump our own? Yeah, there's a 1,000-gallon tank out beside the salt shed. Hmm. Used to be an underground, and then they did an above ground. Because the underground was, I think it failed or it was failing because it was yeah. double walled and it was leaking the first wall was leaking so yeah it got removed and their option well the best option is that you know you leave it above ground then you can tell if it's having a problem or not mm -hmm. and I think there's you don't have to report to this state if it's an above ground if you have a bowl ground take, you have to like report to the state, and it's got to be dipped and tested monthly, I believe. So you have a containment th uh, vessel around the above ground. Right. That one's double wall. Yeah. So anything else? Was it? Did we want to proceed on the? Uh, Proposed uh, energy problems that were discussed. Other than moving the furnaces, you can do the work yourself. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it's not much. I don't think it will have much into it. Yeah. Is that a weight bearing wall? No. Is is it it full truss, they're full trusses that span. Yes, clear. See, span that bolts. used to be. When I was little, I remember going in there as a kid and that back half was never heated. So there was barn doors on that center section. So they'd pull the doors closed and that first half, the small half, was the only part that was heated. That was the part with the water and the bathroom and the office and whatnot. So that was the only part that was heated. The back half was either 
outdoor temperature or slightly warmer. So a motion on the improvements. I make the motion to move forward with the Town Highway Garage and Energy Improvements as expressed to us this evening when we visited the Town Highway Garage. Second. Any other discussion on this? Should we get an estimate on moving those modines? The two modines. Uh, who do we have service them now? Uh, Gillespie's and Vincent talked to Bobby Felch about doing it also. So okay. I can reach out to either one of them and see what they got for price and time. Is that going to be over right. 10 grand? Okay, so we're, <laughs> we're off the hook there. All right. Okay, yeah. Uh, um, so do you want prices or do you just want to find somebody that's available? Well, I would just, go, would just go get get the, the best deal you can. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll find out who's cheaper and then we'll go with yeah. that one. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, those opposed, motion carries. Thank uh, you, Tim. Thank you. International trade and allowance. So under packet is a uh, quote from Allegiance Trucks in Jericho, which used to be Clark's um, for the 2015 International we're looking to trade in. Um, their quote to bring it up to, they said they were only accepted on the trade in if it would pass a DOT inspection and to be in support of $13,905 uh, to bring it up there. Now, I, you know, I think there's some, um, I don't want to say fluff, but I'll call it fluff for lack of a better word in here. I mean, they're charging us $640 to do any inspection that they're requiring themselves. There's a lot of uh, diagnostic costs in here. Um, they're charging us $346 in tax, which probably would not be um, taxable items. I mean, there's a good, uh, come, you know, come down quite a bit from what they're quoting us here initially, but my sense is. <clears throat> Instead of spending the money to get it into a condition that they're, uh, you know, paying their top dollar for labor and everything to bring it up to, you know, their so-called standard to accept it as a trade-in, um, just get it back and put it out on the uh, open market for uh, sale of bids and sell it directly ourselves. <clears throat> when is the next state auction coming up? May next year. Probably not in the fall this year or not. It'll be May of next year. I'm just throwing some notices. And well, the thing of it is, is the, the state auction is done by um, Auctions International, right. which is out of New York. And you can take and advertise on, you can you can put the equipment on there and they'll take and uh, then you get that uh, advertising for free. Right. So, Talking with Craig a little bit, Barrytown's been doing it for a while now. Private sale in their trucks instead of trading them in. They seem to have a little bit better luck and getting a little bit more. You know what I mean? Trade in, you know I mean, trade in is what they're going to give you, but they're going to mark it up when they turn around to sell it. So um, he seemed to think that most of their trucks also go to the same guy that buys all the state trucks out of Maine, running them up in the townships and logging camps and stuff. Uh, I told Tor, I said, you know, if this was the route that we chose, I could talk with Barry Town a little bit, see what they do, see who they go through, or even if we find a direct line to the guy in Maine that buys and sells all these trucks, we may be able to do that also. They are going to fix it, it's going to have like a thirteen or sixteen hundred dollar bill. It needs an ammonia sensor in the exhaust system. 
Oh, for the death? Mm hmm. So the truck is in limp mode. So when they fix that, it will be drivable and we can bring it back here if this is what we choose to do. Well, I mean, the, the uh, sensor, if that's what it's going to take to get the truck mobile, <coughs> much question there. Mm -hmm. So what's the board's preference on the truck? Bring it back and private sale it? Or what do you go up there for, to begin with? That sensor? To be traded in. To be traded in. Yeah. It died. Died in the end of the spring. Well, it went into limp mode. Um, What's the approximate cost of the ammonia sensor? They gave me a quote. I think it was like sixteen hundred bucks. That was parts and labor. The sensor is like seven hundred dollars mm -hmm. for a thing that's no bigger than that cell phone in a box. But that DPF stuff is expensive. Um. So yeah, it's been, it said we needed that sensor, but it went, we had it down at uh, Evan Chaingraz in Barry. He was looking it over, he was trying to get it in down there because his, his labor rate's a lot cheaper than the dealerships. True. Um, so. And um, then the flood happened, and it kind of got put on the back burner for a little bit, and then now the other truck's ready to go, so we uh, we got it towed up there because they couldn't figure out what was wrong with it at Evans, and so I had it towed up to Allegiance. Mm -hmm. And they put it on their computers and they came up with it needed an ammonia sensor is what it what ended up being the problem for it. I'm inclined to have the work done on the ammonia sensor, get the truck back, and then open it up for sealed bids and sell it privately. I agree. <clears throat> Was that as a motion in a second? It sounded like a motion in a second to me. Any other discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, let's see here. Truck extended warranty for the 2023. This is the white truck that we affectionately call Betty White. Um, historically, we've always gotten the extended warranty on the trucks we did not on this one well when we bid those trucks everybody bid them without how much is the extended warranty about nineteen thousand and how long will that seven take years to, that's for seven years on the drivetrain for the entire truck brake cans really pretty much oh yeah like tj's Chuck this one up there to for the um, air cooler, the top of the air cooler split. That truck's almost three years old. They put three new brand new air, brand new air cans on it. It's all covered under warranty. Like it's it's a very good warranty. Like they cover just about everything on that truck yeah. with the warranty. So for seven years we pretty much don't have to pay for anything wrong with it. And it includes uh, $1,000 in towing. So if the truck breaks down, the warranty covers tow bill. We don't pay that. And then tow bills are up to $800. That's $1,000 for each tow. Yeah, that every, every time it gets towed, it's, okay. it covers the tow for seven years. So you hear a motion on this? How much is a tow now currently? About 800 bucks. That's through the roach. If you mm -hmm. use Clark's service, it's 1,000. Mm -hmm. 1,100, mm -hmm. 1,100. Where exactly? 
So in years past, do you know how much our extended warranty would have cost us when it came through? It would have been part of the bid. Right? Same price. That's the price that we get. Like the the truck that the 2015 is being traded in for. That's it's the same warranty as that truck. And, is that and it was nineteen thousand dollars then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was for eight years though. Seven. Seven. They only go out seven years. Okay. Is there any room for negotiation on the figure in no. terms of what they're quoting? No. So on the truck you're getting rid of, one that, that uh, just coming out of warranty, that has... Well, that one's been out of warranty, that 2015 only had a five-year warranty on it. There was a, there was a few years there that I guess some warranties got not, they got five years instead of sevens. Yeah. The 2015 and the 2017 both got five year warranties on them. Not seven like the rest of them. Yeah. We think we did the five because we we're trading them in as the war as, as a rotation. So, the motion on this? So, so, what was originally going to happen was is that the trade of the 2015 was going to go toward the truck and cover the warranty for the white truck, was how we originally planned it when me and Vince. So it wouldn't be any out of the pocket for the warranty on the white one. But so that didn't happen as planned. So basically if you take in uh, if you if we buy the warranty when we sell the other truck, it'll just take in room. Got a year. Yeah. Got until March of this coming spring. Before we have to make a make a decision. They automatically get a one year warranty. <laughs> I make the motion to purchase the board. Mm -hmm. You're a second? I'm on the fence. I'll second it. Okay, any more, any further discussion? I'm on the fence. It's a lot of money. It, it does guarantee, you know, so all of the coverage that you explained. One bill last year on that six wheeler was nineteen thousand dollars. One bill. Mm -hmm. The 2017 has had a motor and a transmission and put into it for free. That's almost seventy or eighty thousand dollars. I mean, that nineteen when you go and spend, you know, I mean, a motor is. Eighty to seventy thousand dollars. So when you go and something happens to one of the motors and it's not covered under warranty, that nineteen thousand compared to the seventy thousand that you've got to put a motor in a truck for, mm -hmm. when it's covered, it's and that nineteen thousand is only a one-time deal. You know, when that motor could go twice for some reason, like Mortown. Town of Mortown's had three. I think they might be on to their fourth motor in the same truck in less than two years because may not be a manufacturing problem that's to be decided yeah. through that but they've had a truck in the shop the same truck four times for the same problem and it's been a motor job bowl three out of four times so far onto its fourth i believe <clears throat> does the warranty does that is that re, um is that a repair warranty or is it a replace warranty? It's a very good question. I was wondering about that too. And could you get it in writing so that we could look oh, at? I have them. Oh, you do. But it's great, great. You know I mean, I have that all in email, but it's you know I mean from April, May. Yeah. I'd have to go back and look at it. Of course, I, I suppose if if it's all covered under the warranty, it's the same. Matter, it's the same matter. one we've been getting for yeah. for years. It's yeah, the we, same warranty that just. Yeah wouldn't matter if it's repair or replaced because if, if they repair it and it fails it just gets repaired or replaced or repaired again right the only trouble is you got a truck then 
Yeah. Any other discussion on this? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion. Aye. Throw in an aye. No, okay. Motion carries. Uh, right away permit on Scott Hill Road. So, Mr. Casabon has submitted a request uh, for 1784 Scott Hill Road. Um, the house of the church. I can remove this culvert and driveway. Yeah. Wants to move it further down and add five to eight feet to it toward the south of Scott Hill. Yeah, he, it would be the side like south. South of the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've gone out and looked at it? I looked at it. I didn't I know there was nobody around. I didn't see them. So it was early. Um, Besides the fact, if they're going to, you know I mean, they'll have to put a new culvert in when they... What size the culvert now? Uh, it looked to be somewhere around a foot to 15 inch. So it'll be an 18 inch. So the new one would be an 18. So the, the only thing that's going to be in the town right away is just the... Well, the work would just be the uh, <coughs> would really just be the widening of the, the, widening of the, uh, the curb cut and, and the changing of the pole. Out. Do we have a limit on our curb cuts on width? We discussed the in the spring, wasn't it? And you had made a recommendation that you would like to see thirty feet as a minimum. Was that correct? I think that gives. I think 30 feet would, would give you uh, enough of, depending on the depth well, the of the digits. Yes, because, because the problem that's the thing. is, is you see a lot of people, they just throw a 20 footer in there, and then mm -hmm. they, by the time you get some dirt, and depending on the depth, the deeper it goes, the narrower the driveway is. Right. And, and again, that's another thing. Like, and it's, there's a lot of variables there. You know what I mean? Depth of our cross culverts. Uh, whatever there is for material whether it be ledge or whatever for depth but you know what I mean a lot of you see a lot of driveway failure culverts because they're not deep enough they surface they get hit plowing or they're not enough cover on them and they get crushed from you know service trucks oil trucks whatever people back in their driveway but yeah I would agree with Joe as far as I, I th think there was some movement towards the revise of that being a minimum of 30 feet. And will the tree need to be removed or does it stop that's just to, prior to the tree? That's up to them. That's yeah. nothing to do with us. Yeah. I mean, if they're going to widen your driveway, I'm assuming they're going to limb that tree up because the tree's sticking to their driveway as it is now. Mm -hmm. So they're either going to remove the tree or put the trees back out of our right away. If not, very close to the edge of it. I make the motion to approve the permit from Thomas Casavan for the work on the east side of Scott Hill Road. Second. I'm afraid that you want to put a condition of the 18 inch culvert? Yes. Minimum, <clears throat> Minimum 18 inch culvert, yes. That's the, our standard now. I was going to say that's our standard now, isn't it? Uh, yeah. How is that now? As far as like what Joe was just saying, is that is is it just as easy just to make an amendment to our policy to state thirty feet as a minimum width of a? I don't think that would have to go I think it would have to go through zoning. I think we need to at least uh, touch base with touch them. base with them. But yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll look into that. Wonderful. Thank you. Any other discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, bond vote um, one amendment. Um, that we can 
I'll strike from the agenda. <coughs> Municipal Planning Grant Application Resolution. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm under the opinion um, that um, with the uh, upcoming options tax, um, if, if we keep in there the stipula stipulation that will be used for uh, capital projects uh, that we need to tighten up our capital budgeting process. Um, we've got um, several aspects to it. We've got um, buildings, bridges, culverts, uh, roadways, um, highway trucks and equipment, police vehicles and equipment, um, there's many different uh, moving aspects to it that, you know, I think we need a coordinated process to do it, to, you know, to come up with a plan, to tell, to tell our story how we're going to spend the money, and not just how we're going to spend the money this year or next year, but how we are going to spend it in, in perpetuity. Um, so there is um, grant funding available. Um, through the Department of Housing and Community Development to assist municipal, municipalities in developing their capital budgeting program. Uh, the Town of Orange uh, just went through this uh, last year. They should be getting their final report any day now if they haven't already. Um, I understand that Middlesex is also looking to this process. Um, so as, as part of the grant application, the Planning Commission and Select Board need to pass a resolution basically stating that they're going to abide by the uh, provisions of the, uh, of the grant program if, if accepted. Uh, the Planning Commission accepted uh, and made that approval last Wednesday, September 27th, and I recommend the Select Board uh, do the same and I will make that motion. Do a second? Second. Any further discussion on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, Thank you to work. See here. Approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I make the motion to approve payroll payable warrant 24G07 with checks 23381 to 23437 for payables in the amount of 120000 $240.30, payroll warrant 24-07 for payroll from September 10th to September 23rd, 2023, paid on September 27th, 2023, in the amount of $65,276.54, and the September general journal entries as well. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Uh, Approval of minutes of uh, September the 11th, 2023. I make the motion to approve the minutes of the regular select board meeting on Monday, September 11th, 2023, as presented. Second. Any discussion? Um, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And approval of minutes for September 18th, 2023. I make the motion to also approve the regular select board meeting minutes of Monday, September 18th, 2022, as presented to us this evening. Second. Uh, all those, any other discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Uh, motion carries. And. Uh, Roundtable, Joe. Um, I think before we get too close to winter, we might be wanting to think about putting up some more permanent signs for our roads that are going to be closed. Main Turnpike North, I'm sure, will not be open for the winter. Right? Yeah, I was going to reach out. And so there's going to be signs and barricades or whatever you might believe is needed. Um, those barricades, I would have to go look at the 
the north end of the project, but some of, some of that stuff is actually belongs to Montpelier. The signs um, are ours, the barricades are gone. Barricades are gone? Not on, on the other, on down near Richardson Road, they're still there. Those are still there. I don't know who the, I don't know that, where those came that's from. came from us. But it was, they belonged to Montpelier. Mm. The other okay. side is gone. Somebody either took them or Montpelier retrieved them themselves. Is that for me? It's on my to do list. It's, I looked at it the other day and I was going to call work safe this week and have up some plywood signs made for both sides of that closure. Anything else, Joe? Nope. Well, I was just going to verify that the first meeting for the steering committee of the fire department is next Monday. Is that true? Or has that been set? That has yeah. not been set. Not I got to see what, what the schedule for this room. So the steering committee, this is a, a town committee. And I, and I think um, if at all possible, the scheduling of this room would be a great place to hold it. Yep. Um, being that it will be open to the public. Um, and Flo will be larger in charge on it. And we'll have to warn it and everything. So yep. I was just curious if it was going to be as soon as next Monday. So it hasn't been set yet. It has not been set. Okay. You'll probably find it to be either Wednesday or Thursday of next week. But I want to check on the schedule for this room. OK, very well. Thank you. That was it. Thank you. Well, uh, the last meeting, uh, we have a representative from uh, Burlington Communication here to talk about the uh, police department radios. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of dead spots in town. Um, Craig probably get an issue for the police department. Um, they came out and did some um, signal testing uh, around the town um, and uh, ascertained that, especially in the mall area, especially inside the mall. On the handheld radios, it's practically uh, impossible uh, to get out. Um, still looking at some other options, but one uh, that came up is the possibility of getting the lapel microphones, which is the the speaker mic that hooks onto your shirt lapel. Um, they do make some models of those with an antenna connected to it. So as opposed to having the antenna mm -hmm. be down by your hip, uh, it'd be a little bit higher, might be work a little bit better. Um, they're $369. Um, so let's get one, try it out. If it works, you know, we go from there. If it doesn't, you know, we're scratching out if they're not, we get a better fix, you know, as far as either, uh, I, um, Irish Hill or some other type of uh, system with the state police. So that's where we are with that. So well, I was looking at that email and the project um, has been pushed to, or I should say it's scheduled for October 12th. That's for the road crew repeater to, to raise that. Okay, intent. that's what that was for. Right. It has no bearing on the state police in town. Well, that means that they still own me, I think, three microphones for portables that never showed up after they left because mm -hmm. they didn't have them. Good to know. That's all I have. Okay. Um, I have received a few concerns. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, in there, is a letter concerning uh, Williams Road solar application as well as the annual report from Good Samaritan Shelter if you're interested in that and a dog bite notice for our chair. Don't look so happy. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Uh, just want to take and uh, express to people that uh, the road crew are working along and 
they have a uh, master plan, I'm sure, and that they will take and be, uh, their roads will be fixed as soon as possible. Um, other than that, any executive session? No. Entertain the motion to adjourn. I make the motion to adjourn tonight's regularly scheduled select board meeting. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>